Hey guys, how's it going? TJ here with Dead History, and I'm back today with my son Henry. Hi. And today is our next presidential series installment, and we're taking a look at who, Henry? U.S.'s S. Grant. That's the right. The 18th president of the United States. Very good. That's right. The 18th president of the United States, Ulysses S. Grant. And a lot of really cool things to tell you about Ulysses S. Grant. He's actually one of my favorite presidents of what? all time. Yeah. Love him. A lot of cool things to get into. But first, Henry, tell the people what they need to do. They have to hit subscribe down below, leave all your comments and questions, and hit that little bell. That's right. Exactly. Subscribe, comments, thumbs questions, up. likes, thumbs, thumbs up. up. That's right. Hit the little notification bell so you can be notified every time we put a new video on, which, of course, is when, Henry? Every single week. Every single week. That's right. Good job. So now, here we go. Taking a look in our next presidential series installment at the 18th president of the United States, the man behind us, good old Ulysses S. Grant. And this is... Dead History. Dead History. Hey guys, TJ back with you. And of course... Hi. Henry. So yes, behind us... The 18th president of the United States, Ulysses S. Grant. Some cool stuff to tell you about Ulysses S. Grant, like his actual birth name was not Ulysses. What? It was, yeah, it was Hiram Grant. Hiram. Yes, That's and the name. only reason that he got the whole Ulysses S. thing was because of a mistake and a mix-up at West Point, when he was at West Point. Hmm. We're going to tell you about all that, though. Also, during his presidency, which he did serve two terms, eight years, he actually took on and fought the KKK. What's the, K the KKK? Yeah, the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. And basically what that is, is they were this group of really bad people that didn't like people like black people and that sort of thing. So they were really mean to them. And Ulysses S. Grant, during his presidency, he fought them and took them on. So we're going to talk about all that really cool stuff. And then, of course... He was, of course, the general in the Civil War for the uh, for the Union, for the North. We're going to talk about all that. And Robert E. Lee and all this different stuff. We're going to talk about Ulysses S. Grant. So, it's going to be really exciting. Of course, you did the subscribes. Yep. You did the uh, likes. You, you did all of it, yeah, right? You did all of it. Questions, yeah. though. We want like, those questions. questions. Comments and questions. questions. Leave them. Leave them below. Leave, Leave them below. Them. Tell us what you think about Ulysses S. Grant. We yeah. would love to hear. Yeah. And now, right, Henry? Yep. <laughs> My dad might not not know something about Ulysses S. Grant. He's absolutely right. There might be something we don't know about Ulysses S. Grant that you could comment below and fill us in and tell us about. We would love know. that. So, here we go. The next presidential series installment, the man behind us, Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th president of the United States. Sit back, relax, get that popcorn, as Henry would say, and potato chips. You have to have potato chips. <laughs> That's right. And enjoy. Hey guys, welcome. TJ here with Dead History and welcome to our next presidential series installment. Taking a look at the 18th president of the United States, Ulysses S. Grant. And uh, I am flying solo for the audio uh, on this video. Henry's not with me. Uh, he was just with me for the video por portion. So you just kind of stuck with me for the remainder here. Uh, I'm going to jump right in. Uh, Hiram Ulysses Grant. Yes. His first uh, real name, his actual birth name was Hiram. We're going to get into that here soon. Hiram Ulysses Grant was born in Point Pleasant, Ohio on April 27th of 1822. He was born to Jesse Root Grant, a tanner and merchant, and Hannah Simpson Grant, his mother. His ancestors, Matthew and Priscilla Grant, arrived aboard the ship Mary and John at Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1630. Uh, Grant's great-grandfather fought in the French and Indian War, and his grandfather, Noah, served in the American Revolution at Bunker Hill. Afterward, Noah settled in Pennsylvania and married Rachel Kelly, the daughter of an Irish pioneer. Their son, Jesse, who's Ulysses S. Grant's father, was a Whigs Party supporter and a fervent abolitionist. Jesse Grant moved to Point Pleasant, Ohio in 1820, and he found work as a foreman in a tannery. 
He soon met his future wife, Hannah, and the two were married on June 24th of 1821. Hannah descended from Presbyterian immigrants from Balgali in County Tyrone, Ireland. I think it's maybe Balligali, Balligali in County Tyrone, Ireland. Uh, ten months after she was married, Hannah gave birth to Ulysses S. Grant, her and uh, Jesse's first child. Boy's name, Ulysses, was drawn from ballots placed in a hat. To honor his father-in-law, Jesse declared the boy be named Hiram Ulysses, though he would always refer to him as Ulysses. In 1823, the family moved to Georgetown, Ohio, where five more siblings were born, Simpson, Clara, Orville, Jenny, and Mary. At the age of five, Ulysses S. Grant began his formal education, starting at a subscription school and later in two private schools. In the winter of 1836 to 1837, Ulysses S. Grant was a student at Maysville Seminary, uh, and in the autumn of 1838, he attended John Rankin's Academy. In his youth, Grant developed an unusual ability to ride and manage horses. Grant disliked the tannery, so his father put his ability with horses to use by giving him work driving wagon loads of supplies and transporting people. And unlike his siblings, Grant was not forced to attend church by his Methodist parents. And for the rest of his life, he prayed privately and never officially joined any denomination. To others, including his own son, Grant appeared to be agnostic. Uh, he inherited some of Hannah's Methodist... Uh, piety and quiet nature, uh, but Grant was largely a political before the war, but wrote, if I had ever had any political sympathies, they would have been with the Whigs. I was raised in that school. So pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, Grant said he would have probably been a member of the, uh, the Whig party. Uh, a couple cool things, you know, obviously, so you just heard about his, his birth and childhood and that sort of thing. Um, and then, of course, we're going to kind of get into his, like, political and, well, not so much political, but his military career, I should say. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant actually went into battle with another future U.S. President, Zachary Taylor. Uh, Grant actually fought in the Mexican-American War under General Zachary Taylor, who went on to become the 12th president, of course. Uh, Zachary Taylor led Grant in his first military battle, along with thousands of troops at the Battle of Palo Alto, with Grant going on to fight nearly every major battle of that war. Uh, as regimental uh, quartermaster during the Battle of Monterey, Grant rode through heavy Mexican gunfire to deliver a message for much-needed ammunition after Taylor's troops ran out of bullets. And in his memoirs, Grant recalled how he admired Taylor for the same traits that he would be known for, including how Taylor knew how to express what he wanted to say in the few, fewest well-chosen words, and how his general style was uh, met the emergency without reference to how they would read in history. Uh, so pretty interesting stuff there about uh, Grant with uh, Zachary Taylor. Um, like I said, uh, also interesting fact about the uh, Mexican-American War, um, Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee, they both served in the Army during the Mexican War. Uh, Robert E. Lee was actually the chief of staff for General, General Winfield Scott, while Grant served, as I just said, as a re regimental quartermaster under General Zachary Taylor. Uh, and both Grant and Lee received high marks from their superiors. So, pretty interesting stuff there about uh, Grant and Lee uh, meeting many, many years uh, ahead of time uh, during their uh, t time in the military. So, so pretty cool stuff. Um, now, Grant, let's talk about the West Point stuff. So, his real name was Hiram Ulysses Grant. Um, and interestingly enough... What had happened was um, he went by his middle name. We know that. He, uh, according to what a lot of accounts say, Grant hated his initials, which were H-U-G, hug. Uh, you know, Hiram Ulysses Grant. He hated it. 
Uh, but the moniker known to the history books was bestowed upon him when he was nominated to West Point by an Ohio congressman, Thomas Hamer. Thomas Hamer was an old friend of Ulysses S. Grant's father, and he did Ulysses a favor and nominated him for enrollment at the prestigious military academy in 1839. And somehow, in the process, his name was put down as Ulysses S. Grant, with the S standing for Grant's mother's maiden name, Simpson. So, Ulysses Simpson Grant. The young Grant, aware of his meager social standing, accepted the clerical era, and the name stuck. And his classmates even used it for a nickname, calling him Sam. Later, in an 1844 letter to his future wife, Julia, he joked... Find some name beginning with S for me. You know I have an S in my name, and I don't know what it stands for. Uh, So interestingly enough, that's how all of this came about with his name. Um, The S actually didn't stand for anything. Uh, Like I said, his phantom middle initial was the result of an error from from Thomas Hamer, the, the Ohio congressman who accidentally wrote the future general's name as Ulysses S. Grant when he nominated him at West Point. Uh, And Grant, despite his best efforts to correct the record, the name stuck. Uh, But pretty, pretty funny stuff that, you know, it really wasn't his name. He didn't have a middle name of Simpson or an S, uh, but it did stick. So pretty, pretty cool stuff about that. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant, he actually hated his West Point uniform. Uh, Though grandfathers hoped that pushing him into the prestige of West Point would open up opportunities for his son, the younger Grant pretty much hated the decorum of going to school. He was known to be generally unkept uh, during his time there and received demerits for his sloppy uniform habits, uh, something he continued during his time as commander of the Union Army during the Civil War. Uh, In an 1839 letter, a 17-year-old Grant told his cousin, McKinstry Griffith, he would laugh at my appearance if he saw the cadet in his uniform. My pants sat as tight to my skin as the bark to a tree, and if he bent over, he wrote, they are very apt to crack with a report as loud as a pistol. And if you were to see me at a distance, the first question you would ask would be, is that a fish or an animal? Uh, So pretty, pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, Grant did not like, uh, really, West Point, and he did not like the uniform. Um, There's actually uh, another little thing that I've uh, read before about the fact that uh, Grant, he just hated wearing Army uniforms in general. Uh, Like I said, he received demerits at West Point for his unkept, you know, appearance. Um, And unlike many of his, you know, People, you know, the, these generals, these contemporaries of his in, in the army and such, he rarely carried a sword, Grant did. And he often took to the field clad in a civilian hat. It was mud cake boots and an ordinary private's coat with his rank stitched onto it. Uh, one observer actually said who saw Grant during the Civil War described him as an ordinary scrubby looking man with a slightly seedy look as if he was out of, an, uh, out of office on half pay. Uh, pretty interesting stuff about Grant. I mean, you know, we hear all this stuff about Grant when it comes to, you know, being this great general, of course, the Union general uh, in the Civil War. Um, but he, he was a pretty, uh, he hated wearing the uniform and he was pretty unkept. Uh, so, so pretty, pretty interesting. Um, let me see what else here. Um. Ulysses S. Grant was not a military man at the start of the Civil War. The war hero of the Mexican-American conflict was far from those accolades when the Civil War broke out in 1861. After his resignation, Grant took to a series of civilian jobs without much success. He spent seven years as a farmer, a real estate agent, a rent collector, and he even sold firewood on St. Louis street corners. And when the Civil War was announced, Grant was working in his father's leather store in Galena, Illinois. So, um, interestingly enough, he he was not exactly, uh, you know, all about the military, uh, especially at the start of the Civil War. Uh, Grant turned his occupational failure into military success uh, with a newfound patriotism. 
uh, at the outbreak of the war, Grant attempted to enlist, but he was initially rejected for a military appointment due to his previous indiscretions. So an Illinois congressman, Elia Washburn, he took a chance on Grant and he arranged a meeting with the governor of Illinois, Richard Yates. Grant was appointed to command a volunteer regiment, whipping them into shape well enough that it eventually earned Grant a spot as a brigadier general of volunteers. And Grant later reciprocated Washburn's favor by appointing Washburn to U.S. Secretary of State and later to the Minister of France, when, of course, Grant was president. We'll get into that later. Uh, and Grant is credited with commanding two significant early Union victories at Fort Henry and Fort Donelson, which earned him the nickname Unconditional Surrender Grant. Um, Grant almost lost his post at uh, Shiloh. Uh, after the dual victories of uh, Fort Henry and Fort Donelson, Grant faced harsh criticism for his leadership during the Battle of Shiloh, one of the costliest battles in American history to that point. And though the Union came out victorious, both sides suffered a staggering 23,746 total casualties, a majority of which were Union soldiers. And on April 6th of 1862, Grant's army was waiting to rendezvous with troops led by General Don Carlo Buell and with the goal of overtaking a major Confederate railroad junction and strategic transportation link in nearby Corinth, Mississippi. But before Buell arrived, Confederate General Albert Sidney Johnston's forces attacked Grant's troops. They were caught off guard and the Union soldiers spent most of that day being beaten back by Confederate forces to the point of being nearly overrun until Buell's army showed up to provide reinforcements. The Union actually did win, but Grant's lack of preparedness immediately brought about demands for his removal. Uh, and it was actually a Pennsylvania politician, Alexander McClure, visited President Abraham Lincoln at the White House to call for Grant's removal, saying, I appealed to Lincoln for his own sake to remove Grant at once, and in given my reasons for it, I simply voiced the adamantly overwhelming protest from the loyal people of the land against Grant's continuance in command. McClure later recalled that Lincoln responded, I can't spare this man. He fights. Uh, despite rumors that his early blunder at Shiloh was because he was under the influence, Grant assured Julia, his w uh, wife, in a letter dated April 30th of 1862, that he was sober as a deacon no matter what it said to the contrary. Um, so pretty interesting stuff there uh, about just some of Grant's early childhood and then leading into, of course, West Point and then the Civil War. And we're going to get more into, in part two, some of his military career with the Civil War. Uh, and then, of course, we'll get into his presidency and his death. And that'll all be in part two. Uh, we're going to end this here for part one. Uh, this was just kind of a look at the early life and just kind of growing up a bit and then uh, leading up to the Civil War for Ulysses S. Grant. I hope you enjoyed this look at the 18th president, Ulysses S. Grant, or Hiram Ulysses Grant, as he actually was born. Uh, and part two, stay tuned. Like I said, more Civil War, presidency, death, all of that. And then, of course, the, great, uh, the famous Grant's tomb in New York City. We're going to take a look at all that in part two. Stay tuned. Thanks for the subscribes. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for the comments, questions. Leave them all. We love those things. And thank you so very much for the support. See you tomorrow for part two. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye now.